Good afternoon, and welcome to the Church of the Holy Spirit. I have a few announcements this afternoon. Wednesday's devotions for the month of April are at Holy Trinity Church at 3 p.m. Please come together with your community to enjoy this half-hour devotion, song, and prayer. Our special collection this weekend is for the Ukrainian Unitarian Relief. The Sisters of the Holy Spirit will hold their April meeting on Monday, April the 4th at 6 p.m. in the parish hall. All women are invited to attend. New members are always welcome. Father Matt is offering a mini retreat on Saturday, April the 9th from 9 a.m. until approximately 10 a.m. at the Holy Spirit Church. The retreat will take the form of a Saturday morning mass with a conference style homily. All are invited to attend. The Diocese of Albany is ex excited to begin this nine listening session. The Mohawk Valley Vicarate will be hosting this nine listening sessions here at Holy Trinity Church on Wednesday, April the 20th at 6 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. We hope you can all join us. <clears throat> As we approach the holiness time of the year, we are afforded the opportunity to realize how transformation God is. Again and again, God has transformed the world and the human race never as much as one rising Jesus from the dead. But God also transforms us individually in baptism when we are given new birth in Christ, in reconciliation, when we receive forgiveness, and in the Eucharist, when we receive the body of Christ, the day in and day out in our com complicated lives. Let us keep in mind that transformation means dying to someone old in order to make something new. We ask that you please turn off your cell phones and other devices that may disturb our liturgy. Today's liturgy is celebrated by Father Matt. Please rise and greet the members of God's family present. Unfortunately, he isn't feeling well, 
and will be able to join us for this liturgy. So thank you for praying for Paul, and hopefully you will be here next week. And quite quite readily found out right before we came out here. So um, so anyway, Mark, you got it to say your sponsorial song. So we're adding to your workload. We'll double your pay out of this end. <laughs> All right, God. So, so there's that. And, and as was mentioned in the announcements regarding the Synod, so throughout the opening diocese, as you might have read in the evangelist, the diocese is hosting seven vicariate listening sessions. So the vicariates, if you remember the old deanery model, how the diocese used to be divided up, the vicariates were the same idea, just slightly bigger versions of the deaneries. So for our area, which includes Fulton County, Montgomery County, and uh, part of Kirkwood County as well, too, um, so anyway, uh, the listening session will take place at Holy Trinity Church, beginning with 6 p.m. Uh, adoration in the church, followed by a prayer service, and then a breakout session to take place in the parish hall. If you wish to attend, uh, we certainly welcome all of you. I uh, just ask if you can, if you can go to either parish website and find a link there to register. Or, of course, you can also call either parish office and they can assist you if, you know, if that would be helpful as opposed to going to either parish website or registering there. Last but not least, before we continue on with liturgy today, um, the second collection for today will be for, uh, for Ukraine Relief, so thank you in advance for your assistance with that. If you don't have money with you today for the second passing the basket, there are other options. If you wish, you can mail in your contribution to the church office, or if you wish, you can also make your donation uh, to Catholic Relief Services. Just search for Ukraine Relief. That is what made sense for me. So I, I was able to make two gifts recently for assistance in Ukraine. Okay, that's enough of talking for me for a while. And so at this time, we ask Almighty God for his continued love, his forgiveness, and his mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to your strength in us and holiness. Christ, have mercy. Amen. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation to your people. Lord, have mercy. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to the last in life. Amen. Let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, who opens a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters, who leads out chariots and horsemen, a powerful army, till they lay prostrate together, never to rise, snuffed out and wedged like a wick. Remember not the events of the past, the things of long ago, consider not. See, I am doing something new. Now it springs forth. Do not perceive it. In the desert I make a way. In the wasteland, rivers, wild beasts honor me, jackals and ostrich, for I put water in the desert, in rivers in the wasteland, for my chosen people to drink, the people whom I form 
for myself, that they might announce my praise. The word of the Lord. Our responsorial psalm is, The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. When the Lord brought back the captives of Zion, we are we were like men dreaming. Then our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongue with rejoicing. The Lord has done great things for us. We are filled with joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. We are glad indeed. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the torrents in the southern desert. Those that saw in tears shall reap rejoicing. Although they go forth weeping, carrying the seed to be sown, they shall come back rejoicing, carrying their sheaves. St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I consider everything as a loss because of the supreme good of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have accepted the loss of all things. I, and I consider them so much rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him not having any righteousness of my own based on the law, but that which comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God, depending on faith to know him and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by being conformed to his death. If somehow... I may obtain the resurrection from the dead. It is not that I have already taken hold of it or have already attained perfect maturity, but I continue my pursuit in hope that I may possess it, since I have indeed been taken possession of by Christ Jesus. Brothers and sisters, I for my part do not consider myself to have taken possession. Just one thing, forgetting what lies behind, but straining forward to what lies ahead. I continue my pursuit toward the goal, the prize of God's upward calling in Christ Jesus, the word of the Lord. Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, where early in the morning he arrived again in the temple area, and all the people started coming to him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and made her stand in the middle. They said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. 
So what do you say? They said this to test him, so that they could have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and began to write on the ground with his finger. But when they continued asking him, he straightened up and said to them, Let the one among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he bent down and wrote on the ground. And in response, they went away one by one, beginning with the elders. So he was left alone with the woman before him. Then Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She replied, No one, sir. Then Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go, and from now on, do not sin anymore. The Gospel of the Lord. Think of the power of those words we heard just a few moments ago, actually just a couple of seconds ago. Neither do I condemn you. Those are powerful words, they truly are. Yes, Jesus, the, the um, Jesus, the incarnation of God, fully human, fully God, telling this woman, I do not condemn you. Those are amazing words because we can think about um, how all of us from time to time uh, can really wrestle with guilt, we wrestle with our shame, we wrestle with you know, just our self, our, just our self-loathing from time to time, and we can feel really uncomfortable, and we can really feel uh, as if we are beyond God's forgiveness. And yet we also know our Lord yearns to forgive us, and we also know, too, that while God is just, thankfully, mercy comes before judgment. And thanks be to God for that. We have many opportunities to experience uh, mercy. We you know it is so good. It really is. Uh, for instance, we have been blessed to be able to gather in this church, like uh, for confessions, such as uh, just earlier today, it was blessed to hear confessions, and I was also blessed to hear confessions on Thursday afternoon. Um, and those are, for, for me as a priest, those are amazing opportunities to be a conduit of God's forgiveness. It's not because I myself um, have earned that ability to do that. It doesn't mean that at all. Instead, it simply means that God is able to use a priest a sinful human being himself and to show mercy and forgiveness and to be an extension of what we heard just a few moments ago. Neither do I condemn you. And there were other opportunities, of course, to take advantage of the sacrament. Uh, for instance, I will be able to offer confessions following the 11.30 Mass on Divine Mercy Sunday, the Sunday after Easter, but for anyone who would like to go and to uh, see a priest who does not necessarily live right here um, in town, you can, there are opportunities for that. Uh, for instance, there are opportunities. You can see the flyer for the Divine Mercy Sunday service being offered out of town. I believe Little Falls, so we have those uh, flyers here at Holy Spirit, as well as at Holy Trinity. Likewise, the sacrament of the anointing of the sick is also an opportunity for those who feel weak, those who feel vulnerable to know God's love for them. God loves us, and when we receive the anointing of the sick or partake in the sacrament of reconciliation, we also, to a certain extent, we have a sharing in the relief that this woman caught in adultery must have felt when Jesus says, neither do I condemn you. Again, consider how Jesus tells us he did not come to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. And so as we acknowledge this fifth week of Lent, yes, we do, we do acknowledge that there is sin in the world, of course there is, 
But thanks be to God, Jesus' passion and death means that sin no longer has a final victory, and it reminds us that we are called again and again to take advantage of those sacramental moments for the forgiveness of sins, and likewise to go and to, um, to forgive others for their trespasses, uh, because we have been loved first, we have been forgiven, and may we also be, in our own way, conduits of forgiveness and peace. Time we stand and we profess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only God, Son of God, born of God for all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, be God and not me. That all followers of Christ humbly recognize their weaknesses and seek refuge in Christ crucified. We pray to the Lord. Lord that those who have failed in their Lent and promise begin again with trust in God's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord that elected officials work to endure religious freedom for all citizens. We pray to the Lord. Lord for those requests that have been included in our book of intentions, we pray to the Lord. Lord for those in need among us, especially the sick, the dying, and those who have died, and we especially pray for Clement Laporta, Charles Papa, and Betty Bowles. We pray to the Lord. God of all goodness, listen to the prayers of your children and grant us growth and faith during this Lenten season. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and worthy Father. In the words of the sacrifice of your hands, the grace of the Lord of his name, for our good and good all the soul of church. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of the sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feast, where the joy of minds be pure, so that, or eagerly intent on prayer and on works of charity, in participating in the mysteries in which they have been reborn, in which they, that you know, sorry, which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with angels and archangels, with the thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of Christ, let us be seen in the name of the Lord, O Son of Christ. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the founts of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray. O saints on your spirit, a column like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and then to wither into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper is ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Edward our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. <clears throat> Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that through the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as you forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, and then for us, Lord, we pray for a beautiful, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. I peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with their will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
He called the Lamb of God, he called him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to be shown to my prayer, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let's pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ and whose body and blood we have come in here. Who will give some grains forever and ever. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us today for this liturgy. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people who long for the gift of your mercy and grant that while that your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Be to God. Send Michael, your angel, the founders of hell. Your defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God treat your family humbly pray, and to hell, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, first into thou Satan, and now the Holy Spirit, who proud of the world, seeking your souls. Amen. So this is a joke that was sent to me by one of our parishioners. Uh, she was, at the time, she was visiting in Florida with her son and his family, and this was shared by her seven-and-a-half-year-old granddaughter. Why can't Peter Pan fly an airplane? Why can't Peter Pan fly an airplane? Because he will never land. Uh, 